PCOS stands for polycystic ovary syndrome, and we think that it's caused by, and it, it's kind of interesting because we think of testosterone as a male's hormone, but women do have some too. And if a woman's testosterone is even just slightly higher than it should be, it causes this whole cascade of a hormone imbalance. Um, and Essentially what it does, first of all, for patients that we see as infertility patients, is it will affect the ability of the brain to talk to the ovary to grow and release eggs every month. And so women that have it, the first clinical finding that we'll usually look for is irregular menstrual cycles because women are not growing and releasing eggs regularly as a result of that hormone imbalance. And so what you'll find is that their cycles can be a bit longer than you might expect in somebody that's normally cycling usually that's about every 32 days or so and if somebody cycles longer than every 32 days that can be a sign that you're not ovulating like you should once a month um, and as I always tell my patients with PCOS no matter how many eggs you may have in your ovaries unless you're growing and releasing them fairly regularly it's going to get really hard to get pregnant um, and some women do ovulate here and there with PCOS and sometimes they can get lucky and get pregnant spontaneously, but it does lead to more infertility issues if you can't predict the timing of when and if you're going to actually ovulate. So women that have PCOS may have mostly regular cycles, but it's not uncommon for women that have it to also go maybe two to six months between cycles. And that's a very good indication that you're not ovulating regularly. The second clinical finding that we look for in women that have PCOS is a finding of what we call hyperandrogenemia. And that basically just means higher levels of testosterone in your system than you would expect to have. And that will often present as uh, something called hirsutism, where you can have darker hair on your face or other parts of your body that you would not necessarily expect to have hair growth. Um, and that is something that's a clinical presentation. Or you can have higher levels of testosterone when we do blood work, you'll find that. A lot of women have more mild versions of it and don't necessarily have any abnormalities in their blood work, but just have these fine clinical findings of hirsutism. And then the third finding that we see is actually on ultrasound, and that's why we will always do ultrasound on everybody that comes in for a new patient consult, because these women that have PCOS are have lots of eggs, but they're not growing and releasing them regularly. And so they're in a sense kind of hoarding all their eggs. So when you do an ultrasound, you can actually see these little sacks of fluid that have eggs inside. And women that have it tend to have lots and lots of eggs. So that's one good thing about PCOS is their egg reserve is usually even higher than you would expect for your age. And you'll see lots of little eggs kind of stacked up around the edge of the ovary. We call that the string of pearls finding on ultrasound. And that is a classic finding of PCOS as well. And so we look for these these, these types of clinical presentations and symptoms. So it's kind of a conglomeration of all of these that make the diagnosis of PCOS. That's typically fairly easy for us to make because it's something that we see a lot of where when patients see OBGYNs, that can actually be a little bit more of a complicated diagnosis for them to make. Part of that is because there are two types of PCOS. One is more of a classic presentation where these women tend to have more metabolic issues, have a lot, unfortunately, a lot of trouble losing weight and a really easy time gaining weight. So it seems like a really unfair combination, but they have a lot of metabolic issues that are associated with that. And that then becomes a downward spiral because the more weight you gain, the worse the hormone imbalance gets, the less frequently you're ovulating, and the more infertility you'll see. So the classic PCOS has a lot of metabolic issues high um, insulin levels, a really high risk of developing diabetes, higher risk of high cholesterol, and a lot of other things that go along with that. So it's really important to be careful about your diet and exercise and maintain a normal weight and BMI because that will really minimize all the other issues that go along with PCOS. And then about a quarter of women actually have what we call non-classic PCOS and that's actually quite a lot of patients that we see and that can be even a little bit trickier because these women tend to be really thin and don't have any of these other health sequelae but do still have these classic PCOS ovaries on ultrasound and irregular cycles and they're not ovulating regularly and then still will present with infertility. So there's kind of shades of gray with PCOS that can affect patients in different way, but unfortunately we see a lot of these women because they do have issues with infertility that relate to their ovulation problems. 
PCOS is generally treated by treating the underlying problem, which for patients with regard to fertility is a problem with ovulation. So we're always trying to get our PCOS patients to ovulate when they're not doing so regularly. And along those lines, I think it's really important to emphasize that women that have PCOS that have this more classic form, if they're out of the ideal BMI, then I often will actually really encourage them to try and work on diet and sometimes even have them go away for a few months and really I ideal, get them into a little bit more ideal BMI, work on diet, exercise, and optimizing their BMI. Um, and when they do that, sometimes we'll send patients away for a few months just to get that optimized and they'll start ovulating spontaneously. And it can be even as little as 5% of their body weight that when they drop that amount, they can start ovulating and even get pregnant spontaneously before needing any help from us, which is obviously a bonus. That doesn't always work and you know there's still going to be that underlying hormone imbalance for a lot of these women and so then the next step is really getting into treatment to get you ovulating and we usually use medications like Clomid, that's the one that most people's heard of the most. There's also another alternative that's a little newer called Femara that has fewer side effects and works equally well and these are fairly nice treatments in terms of just ease of access and cost because they are not super costly. It's a pill, you take it for five days in a row, it starts on cycle day three. We typically will do it with a little monitoring at the beginning of the cycle and then around mid-cycle to make sure that there is actually an egg growing. And these medications basically make eggs grow and release when you're not doing so regularly on your own. And so you'll take these medications um, and then come back for a follicle scan if everything looks good and there's a big egg growing, we usually will give a medication that will actually trigger and time the release of that egg into the fallopian tubes and then couples will just do timed intercourse with that. And the great thing about these kind of patients is that it is very treatable. It's probably one of the very most common diagnoses that we treat here at Utah Fertility Center. And it's very optimistic because if we can get these women ovulating again regularly and timing intercourse, that should bring them right back up to a normal fertile couple, assuming all the rest of their workup was in the normal range. We're trying to bring people right back up to about 20% chance of conceiving per cycle, which believe it or not is actually the success rates of a normal fertile couple. So it can sometimes take two or three months to see that success because you're hitting that one in five shot per month, but, but the vast majority of our patients are able to get pregnant with very simple treatments like this um, and are pretty happy with that outcome.